Welcome back to my channel. This video is for parents, and the purpose of this video is to answer the question, how do I teach this stuff? So the way I'm going to answer the question is by um, using the story that goes with how I learned to teach MD, which is the story of how I learned to teach a group of students to make chocolate milk. Um, so I'm going to use that kind of as an example. And as I go through that example, I'm going to integrate the educational theories and how they are applied in an MD setting to teach students with some significant challenges um, who may need instruction broken down a little bit further. So what I'm going to be explaining to you is what's called Marzano um, instruction or Marzano learning, which is a very simple way that works for all learners to teach anything. And I'm going to show you how to teach a student to make a glass of chocolate milk using Marzano instruction. So my work in MD started long before I got my license. I originally worked in a center for um, children and adults and seniors who have significant disabilities who need care during the day. And I was working with a group of teens. And my group of teens was um, specially selected to be the students who had higher needs most of them had been um, assigned to education in the Educational Service Center, meaning their home districts couldn't meet their service needs. So these were students with some pretty significant challenges. And one thing that we focused on that year was cooking skills. Um, and the purpose for that is so that when they're adults, whether they live in a group home or at home or in a community setting somewhere, they'll be able to meet those basic needs for food and snacks without having to wait for somebody else's schedule or wait for someone to be available, they can just go into their cabinet and make themselves a snack that they might enjoy. And that's very liberating for a person who um, might otherwise be dependent on others for everything from eating to drinking to toileting and really never have that independence, which we all feel that need to be independent and assert ourselves. So because this was a group of teens, who did not, at the beginning of the summer, have the ability to prepare simple food items or um, pour themselves a glass of milk and make chocolate milk, I really had to think about what approach am I going to use. And I settled on an approach that I had heard about through other educators, which was um, kind of pioneered or exemplified by the TV show Blue's Clues. Now I've tried to draw a little picture of Blue here, it's not very good. Um, but the idea was that the creators of Blue's Clues pitched an idea to the network, which was initially rejected, which was that they would make one episode each week and rerun it every single day and then do a new episode the next week. And originally this idea was kind of laughed at and seen as lazy, but once they got the chance to actually do this, the reality was that it was very um, engaging for students because, or for children, because they began to be able to predict what was coming in the show. And that, um, to me, is what I really wanted to see with my students. I wanted them to see to be able to anticipate what was coming next and initiate the action and be able to really start to do part or all of the task on their own instead of waiting for me to prompt or waiting for me to initiate. I really wanted this to be something where my kids could come into the classroom first thing in the morning and while I'm still talking to their parents, they could make themselves a glass of chocolate milk if they wanted to. So I used what I called the Blue's Clues method. Now that would be considered common sense in education, that we do the same thing each day. But we, for MD, we really want to break it down into tiny, tiny pieces and do it very much the same way. And it feels like you're not making progress because as adults we're doing the same thing. But if you observe the student, they're making progress and they're adjusting and beginning to anticipate what's coming and prompt for what's next without waiting for you. So this is what my lesson plan looked like that summer. The week we did chocolate milk, we made chocolate milk on day one, chocolate milk on day two, chocolate milk on day three, day four, and day five. It was all the same. We would do it about half an hour after lunchtime. Um, when everybody had eaten and we'd had a chance to clean up and use the restroom and kind of settle down, um, we would make chocolate milk and we did it the same exact way 
every single day. We would read our recipe and then we would make the recipe. And by the end of the week, the students were starting to anticipate or starting to initiate more and more of this task on their own. So it was, it was successful. However, it was not as successful as it needed to be. And when I got to university, and I actually went and got my um, license in special education, I learned about an educational theory called, or an educational theorist, called Marzano. And this is what Marzano teaches. Marzano teaches a very simple progression in instruction from I do, we do, you do. And most school districts use this at all levels of instruction from general education all the way through special education and, and MD classrooms. So the way that this framework works is you start by doing the skill yourself. Whether you're solving an algebra problem or making a glass of chocolate milk, you're going to do the skill first while the students watch. So the students are passive at this point. Then you're going to do a we do. And you're gonna, that's where you do it together. So in an algebra classroom, that means the teacher is solving the problem on the board and maybe they're taking students who've raised their hand to tell the next step or they're letting the students try the problem and then demonstrating at the board how to do it. They're doing it together. And at the last step is the you do. That's the homework assignment or the quiz or the test where the student is expected to do the job on their own. So the way that I've adapted Marzano instruction to my setting is that I've spread it out over multiple days. And I've kind of blurred the lines between each, but not a huge amount. So my chocolate milk lesson is going to look like this. All right, I've added a few more symbols here. This poorly drawn book is intended to represent the recipe. We know that's chocolate milk. That hand is the peck symbol for help. And then this is supposed to look like the symbol stick symbol for question. Um, so what this shows is increasing independence with the task. So the I do is the recipe. And as you can see, I'm going to read my recipe every single day. But on day one, especially if I have a student with more challenges or maybe is resistant to trying this activity with me, I'm just going to read the recipe and I'm just going to talk about how this is going to look, um, what I expect them to do, what I'm going to do. If I have a group of students, I might be assigning jobs and just talking about it. Whether they understand or agree with me or not is another question, but we're just talking about it and looking at pictures of it. And I'll show you an example of a recipe here in a few minutes. Day two, we're still going to read that recipe, and I'm going to review any expectations or roles that I discussed on day one, but then we're going to actually make the recipe. So they're going to get their tools and they're going to make chocolate milk. And as you can see, my help symbol is very big because they're going to have a lot of help. They're going to have help for pouring and they're going to have help for scooping and anything that they need hand over hand for. I'm going to be right there with them doing that. On day three, we're going to read a recipe again. We're still having that I do piece, that modeling piece. And then here's the we do where we're making the chocolate milk together, but I'm giving them a little less help. And now that we've repeated this a few times, I'm expecting them to be able to anticipate and understand a little better. So usually in my classroom, what I like to do is ask some questions. And I will um, create a communication board that I can project on the screen to allow everybody to be able to answer. If your child has an iPad, this is part where you put three or four words in and you say, um, show me the cup. And they push the button for cup or you say, what did you pour? And they push the button for milk. Another thing you can do is you can just ask them to point to different items on the table and say point to the milk and they have to point to the milk jug. You say point to the cup and they point to the cup. Um, if you're not, if they don't have a tablet or they're not at that level or you just want to quickly make sure that they understood um, the activity on a basic level. Now day four is going to be exactly the same as day three. We're reading our recipe, we're doing the recipe with help, a little less help now, and then we're going to answer the questions. The questions are going to be the same, because what we're really doing is we're practicing that language and we're building that, that brain pathway 
to use that language in different settings. So the questions are exactly the same. And then on day five, um, that's usually Friday, so we're having different fun activities in the afternoon. Um, we're going to read the recipe. They're going to do the activity. Notice that I don't have a help symbol here. Some students will still need a little bit of help on day five, and that's okay. Those students are good candidates for repeating the recipe, either the next week or maybe in a month or two, when they've done some other recipes and we cycle back. Um, always looking for that independent piece. And because our Friday schedule is a little different, we don't usually do questions, but there's no reason why we couldn't do those questions. So what you see is there's an I do. The I do stretches slowly into you do, and eventually we get to you do. Now if we don't get to you do in the end of the week, that's okay, because we're going to repeat the recipe again until we're, we're pretty independent with it. So what is on my screen right now, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit if I can, so you can really see it, is this is the re actual recipe that I use with my students to teach chocolate milk. And I've made this using a PowerPoint and pictures that I took on my phone, so the quality is not terrific, but the idea is that my students are seeing how this looks in real time. Now you can make one of these just by taking pictures of the recipe and then flipping through your camera roll with the student. You can use index cards and little sketches like I did. Um, the students in this class, if you're a parent who's in my class, um, the students in, in this class that I'm teaching this year are very, very much able to flexibly switch between symbol systems. So you have some freedom to make an index card or just pictures with pencils even, stick figures, and they will, they will understand as long as you're consistent with it and you use the same language with it repeatedly. So my recipe is very, very simple. Uh-oh. There it goes. It's going to introduce the tools. These are um, PEX cards from the 2003 PEX system. You might have other symbols, or sometimes I just take pictures of the items and put them into my PowerPoint. And then my ingredients, same thing. And I'm gonna, what I've done with these is I've broken the recipe into very, very small pieces. This is a task that I usually assign to somebody who's working on lids that week. Pouring. Notice how I have a little pitcher that has exactly the right amount of milk in it. In my classroom, each student has their own pitcher, and I put the right amount of milk in beforehand, so that helps them kind of control, um, control spills. And then these are the questions that would go with it. Um, again, you could do questions in a variety of different ways. So that's how I've broken up um, the chocolate milk recipe. And you can see there are eight steps in this recipe. And at the beginning, there are students who the only thing that they are able to do on their own is number eight, and that's fine. Um, but as we go on, they're going to get more and more of these steps. until they're able to do it independently. So that's how I'm going to use my uh, Marzano strategy, and I'm going to use that Blue's Clues concept of repeating the same thing over and over. Um, it's the same for me, but not the same for my student, because what they're doing is they're building independence slowly to where they can not only anticipate what's next, but do the piece that's next on their own. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope this gives you some sense of ways to use the materials I'm posting in Google Classroom. Um, Uh-oh. And give some sense of uh, perspective on how they are applied. For daily living skills, I'm going to review the tutorial video or text every day when I'm teaching a text. Um, for reading comprehension, we're going to read it one or two times. I'm going to model comprehension activity. We're going to do some together activities with it repeatedly 
before I start asking them questions about the text. And the first time we ask questions about the text, we're going to do it together so that students have a chance to see each other respond and get a lot of positive feedback before I expect them to do anything on their own. So that is how uh, those resources are intended to be used, is repeatedly over the course of multiple days to where the student is building more and more independence gradually and practicing. And then as they build that mastery, we'll take a break and then cycle back to that skill so they're really able to generalize and use that skill. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me over email if you have my email, um, phone if you have my phone, um, or Google Classroom as well. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye.